Amen. If you have your Bible, you can turn to, to Revelation chapter 12 and then hold your place in Genesis chapter 3. Revelation chapter 12 and Genesis chapter 3. Appreciate y'all being here this morning. Be in prayer for those that normally are here this morning, who you know, we would see in, in church, but are not here this morning. Appreciate. Yeah, I know, I know people, you know, go on visit, you know, vacations and work and travel and stuff like that, but I appreciate y'all being here this morning. Revelation chapter 12. What a day it is going to be when we see the Lord one day. What a day. What a day. John chapter 14, read it sometime. What a day. What a day. But Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says in verse 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. When you think you can defeat the dragon, here you have Michael and angels taking on one person. The dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. The dragon and his angels were fighting Michael and his angels. Takes a lot to fight the devil. Verse 8, and prevailed not. <laughs> you can just put right there, loser. <laughs> Neither was their place found any more in heaven. He lost. And this, I, 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 this is just me. But I believe this was a picture of Isaiah 14 way out where that Satan thought he was going to exalt his throne and, oh, I'm going to be just like God and, and I'm going to do all this. And God said, no, you're not. And the angel, Michael, and, and Michael, the archangel, and his angels fought against Satan and his angels and he lost and he got kicked out of earth. I mean, he got kicked out of heaven and the great dragon was cast out. He was cast out of heaven. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. And verse 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. We have a short time. We need to be busy about the things of God. The devil knows his time is limited. And boy, he is on the war path. He's out deceiving and out just destroying lives. John chapter 10 says the thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy. The thief is the devil. He's come to kill. He's come to steal. He's come to destroy. And we see that in people's lives today. Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says in verse 1, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, 
She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And we see the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's been from day one, all the way through the Bible, even in our day. That's what the devil uses to fight you. They look good for food. Her eyes were, it was pleasant to the eyes, the lust of the eyes. It's one that's good for food, the flesh, and to make one wise, we see the pride of life. That's been the same all the way through the Bible. The devil don't have to come up with nothing new. He just gets us caught up in these three. It looks good. It tastes good. And it's all about me. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? When God knows all about me, all God's requiring of me is to confess back to God. God already knew where he was. He just wanted to have a, hear a confession. Right. I'm right here, Lord. I've sinned. Prodigal son, what did he say? I've sinned against heaven, and I've sinned against my father. He knew what he had done. And when we sin, we think, oh, I sinned against my body. Yes, you did. You sinned towards somebody else. Yes, we did. But when it comes down to it, we sinned against God. I'm talking about people who are saved, people who are Christian, people who know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. When I do wrong, oh, I may do wrong against me and Cindy or me and somebody else. Or me, I mean, I'm, me is in here. Amen. I is in here. Because I is the one that's be sinning. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, I sinned against God. I can get it right with you, but if it ain't right with God, it ain't right. right, right, right. And if I ain't got it right with God, I can get it right with you, but it still ain't right. right, right. He said, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? All he's wanting is a confession of yes, yes. But the blame game. Yeah. Verse 12, And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. There's that blame game. It's still a blame game today. Right. Husbands and wives fight over whatever issues. It's your fault. It's your fault. You spend too much money. That's why the bank account's down. You know, this and that. Just, I mean, it's, just, it's, it's a blame game. Yeah, right. But it ain't all about blame game. It's about self Adam, which I'll get ahead of myself in. But I did eat. Verse 14, the Bible says, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And as one person said, you see all those snakes crawling on the, gr on the ground? You need to be killing them because they're relatives related to Satan. Or some of his relatives. <laughs> amen. Boy, he got a lot of them. Amen. Some are non-poisonous. Some are good. He got some good relatives. Like but most of them are poisonous and they bad. And they said the way you can tell is by their eyes. The good ones are round. The bad ones are like cat eyes. Well, I ain't getting that close to decide whether he's good or bad. Amen. <laughs> are you a good one or a bad one? Oh, if I'm dead in five minutes, you is a bad one. <laughs> Yeah, oh. <laughs> Boom! It's all over. <laughs> now I can check. Oh, oh, just killed a good one. <laughs> I killed a corn snake in my yard. Didn't, I didn't know what it was. Never seen it in my life. It was in my old wooden shed I used to have in the backyard. And I went up there and I got the hoe and I got the shovel and everything and I killed him. I went online, looked him up, said it's a corn snake which is a good snake because he eats rats and mice and stuff. I said, well, Lord, forgive me for killing a good one, but <laughs> he scared me. <laughs> and I wasn't naked, amen. <laughs> but upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 15, and I will put enmity, enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. I, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he, shall, he said, listen up, women. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. Women are considered emotional. Y'all know that, right? Most women are very emotional. You know, men, we're affected by what we see. Women are affected by what they hear. They're very emotional. That's the way God made them. My oldest, Ashley, skins her knee when she's little. 
I just pick her up, brush it off. Oh, come on, suck it up. Suck it up. You know, come on, come on. You know, you, you know, wait a minute. She's not a boy. She's a girl. She's crying. You know, boy, you're just like, suck it up. Come on, man, suck it up. You know, just a scratch. So your, bro, your leg's broken, whatever. Just suck it up. Come on, get some sticks tied on there. Get back out there. Come on, we're treating them to be a man. Amen? Right. You know, I like Esau. I didn't like Jacob, mama's boy. What? Give me that rugged hunter, fisherman guy. Hey, me and Esau, we going fishing. We going hunting. We going to kill some deer, amen? But, Esau, but Jacob, the mama boy, that's the one God liked. But we don't do it the way God, I mean, you know, God don't do it the way we would think he should do it, amen? But I realized I'm not raising a boy. I said, come here, baby. And I picked her up, loved on her, took her inside, cleaned up her little scratch, banded it up and everything and stuff. She may not remember. She may remember it. But God had to let me know, you're not raising a boy. Sorrow and thy conception. Oh, there's sorrow when a woman's pregnant. Amen. I mean, that, them hormones change. You come home and they're crying. You're like, what you crying about? I don't know, but I'm just crying. I'm happy we're going to have a baby, but I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> and in sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children along with the pain. Amen. <laughs> but here's the part I like. <laughs> and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Somebody got authority over you. <laughs> and he shall rule over thee. Whether you like it or not, God did not create you first. He created us. You're the one who failed. You're the one who took of it. We did it willingly, deliberately. But he shall rule over thee. <laughs> You're shaking your head. Your wife rules the house. <laughs> and, and unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Yeah, we got the women today. They want to rule. The, they, you know, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody going to be happy. Y'all heard that line, right? And it's so true. <laughs> but in my house, if daddy ain't happy, it don't care who's happy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming on the back pew. Y'all need to move up here to the front where I can keep a better eye on you. <laughs> because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the fruit, fruit which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Verse 19, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Verse 1, the serpent was more subtle. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, your word. We thank you, Lord, for each person that's here. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the songs that we've already heard. What a day it's going to be when we get to heaven. What a day. No more sin curse. No more sinners. No more government intervention in our lives. And just on and on the list would go. What a day. But until that day, we've got battles to face. We've got the things to do. We need to win souls. We need to be encouragement to one another. Help us this morning. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me this morning as I try to preach your word. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, just help my mind and my heart. Just help me this morning, Lord, to be an encouragement, to be a blessing to your people. Save that sinner that needs to be saved this morning. Encourage those that need to be encouraged. Help the backslider to move forward. Bless us this morning. And we we'll thank you in the wonderful name of Jesus, I pray and for his sake. Amen and amen. I want to talk a little bit this morning, and y'all going to laugh when I give you the title of the message, but it's just something that the Lord laid on my heart weeks ago, maybe even longer, when I found out that Halloween was going to be on the same day of church. And I said, Lord, I don't want to glamorize Halloween because it's of the devil. It's gone from the time I was little where you could actually go out. And you didn't see all these ungodly costumes and stuff. You could go out and you could get candy and you didn't really have to worry about the stuff that you got. Right. Right. Whereas now, today, you may not realize, but today is one of Satan's worship days where the satanic worshipers will sacrifice 
children, babies. If they don't have a goat or an animal, they will sacrifice a human to Satan today on Halloween. It's very ungodly, very satanic. But the message this morning is serpent's tricks brought about God's treats. You heard trick or treat, right? Well, the serpent's tricks brought about God's treats. Amen. A trick is to deceive. Subtle means deceitful, crafty, to cheat. Who's that sound like? Biden and the government. Amen. Amen. Crafty. I speak government too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> crafty procedure or practice meant to deceive. Boy, the devil, he's using the same tools, but we ain't smart enough. We fall right to him. And deceive means to ensnare, cheat, to cause to accept as true or valid. The devil is not scared of God's word. Right. He uses it, right. wow. but he changes it. Right. He knows God's word better than we know God's word. He just takes it and changes it, and he, he knows how to do the work. He's the great deceiver. He's great at deceiving. Amen? Yes. We look at our government. $5 billion for border security is too expensive, but a $3.7 trillion for what they would call a green deal or free health care is not too expensive. You point out hypocrisy in what they're doing, you're considered a racist. Black lives matter, but if I say all lives matter, I'm a racist. Well, thank God for John 3.16, for God so loved the black ones. No, he loved the whole world, which is everybody. Amen. I guess Jesus is a racist when you look at their beliefs. Somehow it's un-American for the census to count how many Americans are in America. You count how many children you have in your family? You count how many people are in the church? You, we, all, we count all kinds of stuff. But because you want to count how many Americans are in America, that's just un-American. <laughs> People who say there's no such thing as gender are demanding for a female president. And getting on that gender thing, you're not happy with your gender, so you want to be called a transgender. You're not happy with your gender, but I'm supposed to be happy with your gender that you ain't happy with. Amen? We're, it's so hypocritical. So hypocritical. But I don't know how many of y'all were here back in February when I taught a Sunday school lesson about Satan. And very quickly, I know it's not a lot of time, and I don't want to give you, you know, I don't want to wear you out this morning. But Satan has a lot of different devices that he uses, and he uses them all for deceiving. He wants to cause you to be disappointed. Not getting what we wanted, we're disappointed. Discouragement, Deuteronomy 1, chapter 1, verses 21 and 28. Discouragement, is God dead? So why you live as, as if he is dead? Despair, 2 Corinthians 4, 8. God is working in our lives. Despair, doubt, he, he put doubt right here. Eve doubted. Distraction, they saw the wind that was boisterous in the storm. We look to the storm instead of to the Savior, instead of the one who can give you security. We look at what can destroy us, but he's the one that can give us life. He uses distractions. He's dishonest, deceit, he's deadness. He said, I know thy works. Are we sleeping? And God, I mean, he's using all discord. Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19. He wants to sow discord among the brethren. Thank God for our good meeting. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but thank God for the, for the visitors being here this morning. Thank God for your, for your goodness. The pastor will be watching this. Thank God for your goodness and your, your, your mercy and your blessings. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank God I knew to shut my tongue. <laughs> you know. Thank God for the, for the meeting or the service we're going to have coming up this Friday. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It could be a meeting, witnessing, yes. telling people about Jesus. Right. But he uses so much to deceive, to deceive, deceive, right. subtle, deceitful, cause you to roam from safety or truth or virtue, go astray, seduce, wander, deceive. And in verse 13, she said, he beguiled me. That goes right along with deception. He deceived me to do that. The thing is, is Eve was not as scared of the serpent. 
my personal belief is that the serpent would wander around in the Garden of Eden. He knew what was going on in the Garden of Eden. He saw their lives from day by day. He's like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. He doesn't just snap on you one time. He's looking at your life. He's got his eyes on what we're doing. He wanders around looking and seeing how he can come into our lives where the, where the open door of vulnerability and deceit is. And I believe that he was wandering around and he was checking out while they were keeping up the garden because God told him to dress the garden and guard the garden, watch the garden. In chapter 2, we told that to Adam. And he's over there and he's, he's checking out on what Eve's doing. Because if Eve was scared of him, she would have ran. But even today, people are not scared of his devices. They're not scared of his deceitfulness. They run to it all the time. That's right. Sin is only pleasurable for a little while, for a little season. Yes, but look at the end result of it. He knows how to act. He knows what to say. He knows how to look. It's sad, but Satan, who is the... The one who has transformed into an angel of light, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. It's sad that he has transformed himself into some preacher standing behind pulpits this morning with a Bible. Not this one. Don't look at me. <laughs> My wife might say, you full of the devil. No, I'm not. I'm full of Jesus. <laughs> you deceived. Amen. But he's transformed himself in some churches. He's in the form of the teachers, the preachers, maybe even the people in the pews. He knows how to transform. He's a good trickster. He's a good magician if you think about it. Because they know how to deceive you with the sleight of the hand. He gets you to believe a lie. He's the great liar, John chapter 8 verse 44 says. You have your father, the devil, the liar, the great liar. He'll wear your mind down. He knows how to wear your mind down. He knows how to tell the right lie. He knows how to just misinterpret things. People would change things. They're deceived. He caused Eve to be deceived. She resisted instead of, she should have resisted instead of debating what the devil has said. Right. Amen. She was deceived. Yes, People have changed the word. Church is not the assembling of live stream. The church is the assembling of us. Yes, sir. Right. God said, forsake not the live stream in Hebrews 10, 25. He said, forsake not the assembling. And if you had to assemble, we're going to assemble out here on the street. We're going to assemble up here in the parking lot. We're going to assemble up here at Walmart and have a protest. What are they going to do? Put a big TV up there and everybody's going to watch it? No, it's going to be people. Right. Amen. Right. But why is it we change? We've changed it. Abortion is no longer murder. It's Planned Parenthood. It's health care for women. I've heard these statements made. Maybe you've heard them. Same sex is not same sex. It's an alternative lifestyle. It's a damnable lifestyle. God says in Leviticus, it's an abomination. You can change it all you want. But sin is never glamorized in the Word of God. Right. You can change it, but it's still sin. Right. It's deception of the devil. Converse with the serpent in verse 2, but James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. We don't need to give him the time of day. We don't need to stand there and let him sit there and carry on a conversation with us. We need to flee from it. Amen. You try to witness to people and they'll want to talk to you about their baptism or, or I'm a pretty good person or I belong to church so-and-so or whatever. That's the devil using them to get you to converse with them, to debate them, and you'll never win. Give them the gospel, give them a track, and move on because you won't win in a fight. The devil will use that one person to keep you there all day long instead of going up and down that road witnessing. I've witnessed that I've witnessed that in people that I've gone out visiting with. He don't want, don't resist the devil. He changed God's word. God said, don't touch it. She said, don't touch it. God didn't say nothing about don't touching it. Deception led to denying what God said. You'll get deceived and then you'll deny what God said. Did God really say that? 
God said, it, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said in verse 3 unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. See, she didn't use what God said. God in chapter 2 said, You will surely die, told Adam. Eve said that we won't die, lest you die. But the devil knew what God had said. You won't surely die, the Bible says. God didn't say it. We deny what God said. But God said it. Did God really say that? Eat? Did God really mean what God said? You see, God's authority is online here. The authorship of the book is online. The, authority, the accuracy of God's word is online. It's on trial, in other words. Did God really say what God said? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. We can deny what God says, and we can live by our own feelings, our own thoughts, or our own lust, and Eve did. So Eve, since you live by your own feelings and your own lust and your own desires, how do you feel now that you ate of the fruit? Do you feel any better? Are you enlightened? Do you want to go and grab another fruit and eat another one? How do you feel, Eve? Do you feel better since you've now were deceived? Now that you have denied what God said? How about me? How about you? How do we feel when we know what the Word of God says and we deliberately, point number one was deceiving, point number two is deceived what God, denied what God said, and point number three is Adam deliberately. When we deliberately choose to sin, Satan's the great deceiver. Denied what God said, and even Eve denied what God said because she changed it. And we will change what God says to try to justify our sin. Yeah. See, as an unsaved guy, I knew certain things. I knew sin wasn't right just the way it made my body feel. When you drink and you drink too much, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to puke your guts out. That's your body telling you no, 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 no. But after you sober up, you get a little food in you, a little rest, you right back to doing it again on Saturday night and, and whenever else you want to do it. And my dad was a weekend drunk, but I didn't learn from that. I ended up going further than what he did when he separated from my mom as a teenager. And now I've heard people tell their testimonies, and sometimes I wonder, are we glamorizing our testimonies to where people say, I wish I was a drunk and a drug addict and, and like you? I wish you wasn't. I wish I had never done what I did. But God had a reason. God had a purpose. God knew by what I did and how I lived my life that one day I'm going to get saved. Thank God for that. And he's going to call me to jail ministry because there are guys in the jail who are worse off than I was. That I can tell them about Jesus. I never murdered anybody, but I led a murderer to the Lord. Two of them, by the way. I never raped anybody, but I laid, I laid I, man, I'm speaking in tongues. I led a rapist to the Lord. Amen. And on and on the line, the list goes. Scared of going into jail? No. Scared of them? Not now, no. Been doing it for over 30, 30 years. Amen. 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 But Adam deliberately sinned. Where are you, Adam? Why are you hiding, Adam? Because we sinned. Nobody had to twist his arm. He deliberately when Eve ate of that fruit, and I don't know what the, some, some commentators, some people think that maybe there was some kind of glow around them. Like when Jesus was transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration, maybe while they were in their, their innocent state before they had failed, maybe there was a glow around them to where they, they couldn't see and all they saw was a glow about each other. But then when Eve ate of the fruit, now she started dying. That glow that was removed from her, and Adam saw her in a different way. And he was like, whoa, wait a minute. To have fellowship with her, I've got to eat. But if I don't, she's going to die. Well, you've got plenty more ribs, Adam, that God could have took. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But instead, he deliberately, the Bible says in verse 6, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. 
brought on this shame, brought on this separation. They were scared. I wish people would run from sin. We run to it instead of from it. There's no shame no more. People want to run around naked out in the world and want to call themselves naturalist. I'm worshiping nature. Well, you know what? I hope and pray you get a bunch of lice and a bunch of ticks and a bunch of fleas. And when the sun sits there and burns down on you, you get skin cancer. You know the greatest protection from the greatest sunblock? You know what the greatest sunblock is? What did you say, brother? Clothes. Clothes. Amen. I got that written right here in my notes. The best and the only sun protection, sunscreen from sun is clothes. Why is these Mexican folk got to come across over here and they know how to dress and the people who live in America don't? Man, they are covered up when they out there working in the yards and got that big old hat about this big on their heads. And, amen. But boy, I see these other folk up there on the roofs roofing in shorts and cut off shorts and look like burnt, burnt, burnt bacon. You want to learn about that? Talk to my brother-in-law, Tommy, who had melanoma cancer. He'll give you a big, long talk about it. But Adam, deliberately, there's no shame no more. It separates us. Sin will separate you from the things of God. Right. Look at the pews. People know to be in the house of God, but they use a different excuse. They say, well, you know, it's work. Well, you know, it's, it's laziness. Well, you know, I just don't care about church. Well, you know, the preacher preaches too long, or he gets too in-depth, or, or just, I mean, all the excuses they are going to stand before God one day, and God says, they, that's justifiable. No, he ain't. That's right. No. But we'll sit in front of a TV show with profanity, nudity, and everything else in it and watch that show for hours and hours and hours. Watch a ball game, holler and scream. Oh, people say, oh, why are you shouting praise God? Because I know where God got me. Amen? Some folk in church ain't never said amen. But I wish to God I'd be in a ball game sitting behind you and you get up there and start hollering and screaming while your team's losing. I'm going to poke you in the back and say, shut up. If you won't shout in church because you're on the winning side, well, shut up because you're out there on, uh, in the world at your ball game. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but separation, suffering, he deliberately chose to. Their eyes were opened. We allow deception to come in our life. We allow, to de we'll, which will turn us to denying God. And we do it deliberately. Yes, sir. And because of that, it brought divine judgment. Verses 16, verse 14, verses 16 and 19. The wages of sin is still death. Y'all know that, right? The wages of sin is still death. James chapter 1, verse 15 says, When lust, the lust of the eyes, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Don't sound like sin and all that's pretty good, amen? Right. But he deliberately, which brought divine judgment, the serpent was cursed to crawl on his belly. And people want to worship the serpent? I'm sorry, but I don't worship nothing down there. Right. I worship something up there. Amen. 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 Why well, worship something on his belly in the dust when I can worship God up there in the heavens, amen? amen. He was cursed. The woman's sorrow, her desire was to her husband. Subjection. Adam, your responsibility. You see, God said to the serpent, the Bible says in verse 14. Then God has said to the woman in verse 16. But God shows who's really the important one by calling him by his name. The one who should have been taking care of his household. The one who should have never partook of the fruit. The one God called him in verse 17 and unto Adam. Lord may say to my wife, woman, to my daughter's <laughs> serpent. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they know I'm kidding with them. They go, Daddy, why would you call me a serpent? <laughs> Does that sorrow? You know, why would you call me a serpent? They, they know I'm picking with them. You know, I can't pick with y'all. Y'all get mad. Y'all walk out. I can pick with my friend. They tough, man. They tough. Amen. <laughs> tough as shoe leather sometimes. <laughs> but they tough. But God will say, Lewis, he would I would be the one that God would talk to. 
Amen. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you pray more for your family? Why didn't you read more of the Bible with your family? Why didn't you do more spiritual things with your family? See, God holds the man accountable. But thank God, when old serpent with his tricks, and he still got his tricks today, but thank God the serpent's tricks brought on God's treats. Amen. 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 Treats, the Bible says, well, treats, the Bible says, treats, the Webster's Dictionary says, is to pay another's expense. Does that sound familiar? I can pay your lunch or your supper. I can take you out for a meal or for something to drink. But when it comes to sin, <laughs> only one person can pay that. And his name's Jesus Christ. Amen. What a treat. He paid the expense. He provided to regard and deal with a specified manner. We fall to the serpent's tricks. But praise God, God's got some treats for us. Amen. God provided grace. Because the Bible says, thou shalt surely die in Genesis 2, 17. But they didn't die. That's the grace of God. Amen. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, the Bible says, in chapter 6. And that is the very first time you see the word grace found in the Bible. And some people will believe, and some preachers will even believe that grace started at Calvary. I'm sorry, but I disagree. Grace has always been with God because Abraham, while you're doing your son, going to kill your son, the grace of God showed you a ram in the thicket. Noah, what you doing out there for 120 years? I'm building an ark. Where well, the grace of God helped you build that ark to where you and your family would be safe and secure from the flood. Hey! Hey, Daniel, what you doing down there? I've got some long jaw lions I'm sleeping with, and those lions couldn't eat me if they wanted to. I got a lion pillow, a lion comforter. Man, that's better than what Ralph Lauren and, and Calvin Klein and all the best of them got. Amen. Amen. We want to get a cake. Yeah, we, people want all kinds of gift cards for their women's stores and all that stuff and for the men's stores. And all you need is a lion comforter and a lion, a lion pillow. Amen. <laughs> that's Daniel. That's the grace of God. The three Hebrew children, the grace of God was the fourth man. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the grace that was provided. Amen. Thank God the grace. Titus chapter 2 tells us that that grace teaches us. That grace had appeared to all men, teaching us to deny an ungodliness, worldly lust, living soberly, righteously, looking for our blessed hope. Looking for the Lord Jesus Christ. It teaches us how to live. Amen. It transforms our lives, how to live. It's trusting, looking for that blessed hope. Thank God for the grace that teaches us stuff. Thank God for the grace that will transform you. Thank God for the grace that you can trust in the, the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in God's word. Amen? Amen. It's grace with a plan. And God's grace was forgiveness. Amen. We messed up. They messed up in the garden, but thank God for forgiveness. You said, oh, they didn't ask the Lord to forgive them, though, but God showed it. Because what did God say in chapter 2? Thou shalt surely die. The day you eat of the fruit, you shall surely die. Y'all remember that, right? God said, you're going to die. The wages of sin is still death. Right, right. But thank God, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God provided the grace because God had a plan with the grace. The plan was forgiveness. You didn't have to die. The plan was a redemption. A lamb was slain, which brings me to the second point about the, the treat. Thank God for a promised gift. Thank God for the grace, but thank God for a promised gift. Amen. He said in verse 15, I will put enmity, enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Hey, you down there on the ground, the best you can do is bruise my heel. But he's up there. He's going to knock you up beside your head, devil, one day. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for a promised gift. Amen. The promised gift was the seed, was the child, was Jesus Christ. You said, I was the promise. Where, where's the promise in that? They messed up. You had Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel. But you know who the promise was? The promise was Seth. See, God takes our destruction. Boy, you talk about the grace and mercy of God. Man, people you would never think that are in the Bible. People who you would never think that God could use in the Bible. Look at Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3, real quickly. I need to hurry. I mean, time's just 
going. I know y'all getting ready to eat and your bellies are growling and everything else. But, but look, at, look at Luke chapter 3 real quick. Talking about that promised gift. God's promised that gift to us. God provided the seed. God did the covering. He sacrificed. The Bible says in verse 21 of Genesis 3, and, and Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. He covers us with the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, to kill something. I believe it was a lamb that God killed. He made a coat from it. Why would God take another animal when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God? And all through the Bible, we see, we see where Jesus is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the, uh, the world. Uh, so I believe God had killed a lamb in the Garden of Eden and took that blood because Abel, Adam, I mean, Adam, you know, Abel and them brought, brought of the firstlings of the flock. And he took the blood. We're covered by the blood. The coats of skins, Romans 5, 8, verses 8 through 17, talks about the security that we have. Thank God for the covering. Thank God for the child. Amen. Thank God for that. But look at Luke chapter 3 and verse 23. The Bible says, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph. And then it goes on and goes on and goes on. And verse 32, it says, was the son of Jesse, was the son of Obed, which was the son of Bo Booz, which was Boaz. And you think about Boaz and who did Boaz marry? A Moabitish woman by the name of Ruth, right. who should have never been in the lineage of God's people in the first place. You look at David. David's in there. Jesse had David. David, a man after God's own heart, but you committed adultery and murder. You should have been put to death according to the law. But Nathan came and told you that thou art the man, but God's had mercy on you. But you're, you're going to give fourfold. Your children died. And it goes on and on and on and on. Then it goes down to verse 36. and says, Noah, which was the son of Lamech, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, and on and on. But look at verse 38, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of who? Seth. Seth. Wait a minute. That's the third child. Amen. Right. Wouldn't Abel have been? Then Abel first Cain, Seth, but Cain, you killed Abel. So now I've got to go to Seth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God God knows how to provide. Right. Which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Amen. God was Adam's father. Because he took the dust of the earth and formed man, and man became a living soul. Amen. Thank God God knows how to pro he, he He promised that gift. And that gift was promised way back thousands and thousands of years ago in the Garden of Eden when he said, I'm going to put in between, between your seed and, and her seed. Oh, devil, you got a lot of children, but I got some too. And yours, all the best, your, all the best you can do is get, is get on that hill because you down there in the dirt. But I'm going to get up here. I'm going to knock you up beside your head one day. I mean, uh, you know... I had surgery on my foot three years ago, and it's healed. Bone spur removed, and it's healed. But you know what? If I got a head wound on my head, it could kill me. Right, man? I ain't heard about too many people dying from a foot injury, you know. But boy, you get a head, a bad head injury, you can die. And old devil, you're going to get a bad head injury one day. Why serve him? The serpent's tricks are the same, but thank God for God's treats. Amen? Amen? Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift, the blood, the book, the blessed hope. Thank God for one, another one of His treats. It's not only just the, prompt, the grace, the provided grace, the promised gift, but last point, protecting God. I mean, sir, protecting guardian. Protecting God. Like God needs protection. Protecting guardian. Verse 24 of Genesis 3, the Bible says, So He drove out the man, and he placed, because he didn't want man to eat of the tree of good and evil, and on top of that, he didn't want the man to eat of the tree of life. Can you imagine? Adolf Hitler did a lot of damage in the years that he was, you know, ruling Germany. He killed a lot, millions and millions and millions of people. But could you imagine if Adolf Hitler had the power of eating of the tree of life and living forever in that condition, how many hundreds of thousands and millions and billions of people he could have killed in his lifetime? Thank God God didn't let them eat of the tree of life because they would have been in, in that state of sin forever. Forever. 
Thank God we won't be in this state of sin forever. Amen. Because of the grace, because of the gift. And thank God, God has given us some guards to, to guard us. The Bible says, and he drove out the man and he placed it to the east of the Garden of Eden, cherubims. You say, what are cherubims? Well, Isaiah says seraphims. And seraphims are angels because the Bible describes them as angels with wings, angels with feet, angels with faces. So if the seraphims are angels, I just think the cherubims are probably angel guardians that guard the good around the Garden of Eden also. That's just my thought. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encampeth around those that fear God and delivereth them. So I believe that the cherubims were probably guardians, were probably servants that were, that were of God that were protecting, performing God's duty. That's just my thinking. You got seraphims, why not cherubims? That's not the man and the woman, like they say the apostles and the, and the, the, I mean, the epistles. The epistles is the wife to the apostles. No. <laughs> but thank God for servants of God said, and also a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Flaming, when I think of flaming, it, my mind goes to Acts chapter 2. The tongues of fire, flaming tongues of fire that sat on their heads where Pentecost, where the Holy Ghost of God came. Thank God we have a guardian. Servants, I can guard your life and you can guard my life. Amen? But thank God for the flame. Thank God for the Spirit of God that will help guard us. And thank God for the Word of God, Amen. the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Ephesians 6 says. Thank God for God's protection. Thank God for that. Yeah. As a servant of God, I'm supposed to encourage you. I'm supposed to help protect you. As a dad to my daughters, I protected them. As a mother, you protect your children. Amen? But as a church body, we need to protect one another. Sin is not good. I don't care how old or how young you are. It will destroy you. Don't listen to the lies of the boys. You're pretty. You're my darling. I love you. Oh, come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Don't listen to those lies because once you get in that back seat or once you get wherever you get, it's too late to decide on what you're going to do. You can't turn off a wild dog or a wild animal when he's wanting to chomp on some meat. You can't turn him off unless you kill him. Amen. You better, you better make sure you know what to do before you do wrong. Because every wrong has a consequence. God's divine judgment. But thank God for the spiritual power, the flame, and, and the, the scriptural pages, the sword. Thank God for the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Thank God, Rahab the harlot. What was your guard? Well, I had a scarlet cord. Noah, what was yours? I had an ark. Daniel, what was yours? Locked jaw lines. What was yours, Hebrew children? The fourth man in the fire. Hey, Peter, what was yours? You were sleeping between the two guards. What was yours? An angel came and woke me up. And the angel smote him, the Bible said. Woke him up. And I got up, and I was sitting there, and the angels, the chains fell and girded myself, and I'm thinking I'm in a trance or a dream, and got to the gate, and the gate opened up, and I realized that the angel had gone. I realized what had happened. Thank God for guardians through the Bible. Paul and Silas, what y'all got? Well, we just, we ready to go to the chopping block, but we're just going to praise God. You know, we're going to be with the Lord in a little while. Paul, what you got? I got a basket. How about us? What do we have? We have the Spirit. You saved this morning? Do you know Christ is your Savior this morning? You have the Holy Ghost of God living within you. Amen. We have something that is with us forever, 24-7, all the time. You go to school, you're away from your parents, you're away from home for a while, but the Holy Ghost, if you're saved, the Holy Ghost is there to help you and protect you. Amen. We have the Scriptures. We have the Word of God. We have the pages of God that we can, that we can read that will help us. Do you have to dust it off or do you have to go look for it? You should know exactly where your Bible is, and you should read it every day. But, but then as servants of God, we should be in helping one another. Love the brethren. Love one another. Serve God, but serve others also. Amen? In the book of Acts, what did they do? They chose out deacons to do what? Serve the widows. Serve people. Amen? And we all need to be served. Pick up the phone, like I said, call somebody. Text somebody. Tell a missionary you're praying for them. Tell somebody you're praying for them. You miss them at church. You love them. Amen. That ain't hard. Five seconds, five minutes out of your day. Amen. William, he won't answer here, but I've tried numerous times. But you can go visit him. But the devil, his old serpent's tricks, they're the same. But thank God, God's got some treats. If you're not saved this morning, you can have the gift of God this morning through the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of God is on your life right now. 
Because God doesn't want anyone to perish. God's not slack. God wants everyone to come to repentance. If you don't know Christ as your Savior this morning, you can know Christ as your Savior this morning. Old, young, God, God's no respect their persons. He wants everybody to come to repentance. But if you backslid, the grace of God's still on whoever's backslid this morning. God knows what you're doing. God, you, we can't hide from God. You say, well, you know, I'm, I'm your daughter. I'm your, I'm your son. I'm whatever. I mean, when we stand before God, pride is not going to be a, it's not really going to matter. Well, Lord, I would have come to you, but what would the people think? I've been sitting in church for, for 30 years, 20 years. What would the people think? What would they think? Oh, they go to the altar and pray. What do people think? Who cares what people think? It's not what I think. We all have opinions. We all assume. And assume assumptions and opinions will get you in trouble. But it's what does God think? Amen. God wants us all to be saved. God wants us all to be sanctified. God wants us all to be serving. Amen. 